morning i am dr pin agrawal today we are going to talk about parotid gland as we have already seen the patient uh, this was having a parotid swelling for last one year which is slowly increasing in size and patient was not having any problem on clinical examination there was 3 cm size swelling which was there in the right parotid region no involvement of the facial nerve no intraoral finding suggestive of deep lobe enlargement and there were no lymph node in the neck so on clinical examination most likely it was a benign parotid swelling likely to be pleomorphic adenoma as you know that majority of the parotid gland tumor they are benign 80% of them and only 20% are malignant by and large benign swelling does not cause facial nerve involvement but not necessary that all the malignant swelling will cause facial nerve involvement not necessary so our aim is now on clinically it was all right so how to what should you be doing for confirmation of the diagnosis so before that there's a little bit of anatomy as you all know lying the rss bounded by the ramus of mandible base of skull and mastoid it lies over the carotid sheet in relation to 11th and 12th cranial nerve and it enclosed in a deep cervical fascia so this is what is the anatomy if you can see all right that is what uh, you should be sometime there is a accessory lobe you can see this is a parotid duct all right this is masseter this is the masseter muscle all right and this is the whole of the parotid gland which you can see all right this is sternocleidomastoid and inferiorly it is in relation to the digastric muscle All right, so this is what is the parotid gland and uh, salivary secretion through the extension duct as upper second upper molar I've already said. Imp- what are the important structure? Facial nerve. There are no two anatomical lobes of the parotid. You must remember it is only that facial nerve is passing, so that divides arbitrarily that it is deep lobe and it is the superficial lobe, and there are retromandibular vein and of course lymph node. Parotid surgery. Why it is important because of the facial nerve. otherwise uh, there is not usually much problem when you are doing surgery however a facial nerve or it's one of the branches divided except buccal branch patient have a significant cosmetic deformity physiological problem and maybe a very sort of case for litigation unless you have explained it to the patient because this morbidity and facial expression is uh, deformity is phenomenal so I have already said that superficial and deep low. Eighty percent of the part is deep low, otherwise twenty percent is deep low. Eighty percent is superficial, and sometimes there is the accessory low which lies over the masseter muscle. Inflammatory disorder. I have already talked. Mass is the most common cause of acute painful parotid swelling. Usually affects the children. You start with a prodromal period of one to two days, during which patient may have fever, nausea, and headache. And followed by painful swelling or burn or both side of the parotid. All right, the complication. One of the most important complication of this is orchitis or oophritis. Sometimes there is a viral pancreatitis also and sensory neural deafness. Treatment is symptomatic with paracetamol and adequate fluid intake. In majority of the time, patient usually get all right within seven to ten days. But when patient comes, you must examine for. testicular examination has to be has to be done bacterial infection as we are talking when we are seeing the patient usually dehydrated patient elderly who has undergone surgical procedure because there is a reduced salivary secretion dehydration result in the ascending infection from the oral cavity through the parotid duct organisms are usually staphylococcus or streptococcus and treatment is intra venous antibiotics and adequate fluid this is another thing that is a recurrent parotitis of childhood right it is a distinct entity with not a definite etiology for that and the characteristic presentation is swelling or one of both parotid glands and symptoms they are make burst by when patient chews or eating diagnosis is on the history that any swelling in the parotid or any salivary gland during meal time means we are dealing with parotitis reason may be stone may be stricture 
parotitis because there is an increased salivary secretion which cannot be drained into the into the oral cavity and patient develops swelling and when after two to three hours swelling subsides whether it is some mandibular or parotid. Treatment nowadays you must be that endoscopic washout and low course of antibiotic that is what is required for these patients and no surgical intervention. A stone benign condition I have already said that more common in some mandibular 80 percent only 20 percent occurs in uh, parotid and parotid they are usually radiolucent not visible on x-ray. However, there is a again recurrent attack of swelling during chewing and enlargement of the swelling this denotes that probably we are dealing with the salivary calculus. A small stone they can be less than 4 millimeter can be by basket larger stone lithotripsy. Now that the endoscope is available which of this diameter you can break them with pneumatic lithotripter and when they are fragmented you can uh, sort of wash out with them with the uh, with the dormia basket. And if there is a stricture of the duct it responds to endoscopic washout and dilatation and sometimes steroid solution. Now the tumor which is a very worrisome feature most common site for salivary tumor parotid all right and they are usually arise in the superficial lobe slow growing painless swelling typically occurs in the parotid region I have already said that sometimes they are anterior to the tragus or ear lobule is lifted. So typically in the parotid region any swelling is there until proved otherwise it is parotid a gland tumor rather than anything else. Only it can be confused with another thing I have already said as a parotid lymph node clinically you cannot differentiate for that some investigation will be required. So once you have diagnosed and facial nerve is intact benign until proved otherwise facial nerve is involved malignant tumor benign tumor does not involve facial nerve.